Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure, a real pleasure to be with all of you today as we celebrate the achievements of SOAS students and pay tribute to the support of family and friends. Graduation is always a special time and it's a privilege that not everyone will get to experience. We all regret that our president, Dane Gracker Michelle, is unable to be with us this year, but it gives me a wonderful opportunity to again be part of a unique SOAS occasion after picking up an honorary doctorate last year and becoming part of the SOAS community. Now, SOAS is one of the finest universities in the world, truly global in scope and reach, and each with its distinct specialist knowledge of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. SOAS offers a truly distinctive opportunities for students and academic staff to experience on a daily basis, the interaction, connectivity and exposure which are microcosm of today's world. For more than 100 years, SOAS has been at the forefront of specialist scholarship on the languages, cultures, societies, politics and economics of Asia, Africa and the Middle East. And it's really rare to find a place with such a rich diversity of cultures and backgrounds and where learning and critical thinking are nurtured and enhanced. What makes SOAS particularly special is its global perspective. Our world needs people who can build bridges across communities and cultures to bring people closer together. Now, to the graduates, I'd like to say that the SOAS Foundation has further shaped you into unique individuals that you can be proud of and that will help you to make your mark on the world. We're also very unique, so be proud of who you are and the impact you can make. Your personality, your outlook on life and your environment will determine how your life will develop from here on. Looking at my own situation and that of the mobile organisation that I run, all our important work with cultural diversity stems from my own background. I grew up in a large family of nine children with a Ghanaian father, an Irish mother, in a crowded council flat in Kilburn, a community in northwest London where people have settled from all over the world. My parents came here at the age of 18 to pursue their dreams at a time where there was notices on windows that said no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. It really was a very, very bleak period for them, with not only discrimination being rife, but also the move to a new country, away from family, friends and their support network. This further turned this into a very isolating existence. Now, two things shaped my destiny as a young girl growing up. One was being written off by my teachers and friends when I became a parent at a young age of 16. And the second was the advice I was given by a careers officer when I went to see her to discuss the choices I had in my life. I told her I wanted to start my own business one day and become independent. And I was told that I would do better if I was more realistic about my career options and that if I worked hard enough, I might be able to eventually work my way up and become a ma manager at Sainsbury's. And that should be my goal. Although this is an honourable profession, it was not what I wanted to do. And I came away from that office feeling like it was worthless and it was wrong to have ambitions, especially given my background. It was around this time that I ventured out on my own, determined to pursue my own goals. And from then, I decided who I was destined to become was who I decided to be. In growing up, surrounded by talented artists who were frustrated by the lack of awareness of their creativity, this alerted me to a huge void in the music industry's representation of popular music and instilled in me a drive to empower others to realise their potential. There will always be people telling you what you can and cannot do. These people will also play an important role. They motivate you to rise above, to challenge yourself, to prove them wrong. I realised that I could either follow the same path as everyone around me, or I could venture out of my comfort zone, write my own story and create my own path. If you don't create your own story, someone else will create it for you. Stories don't just explain who we are and where we've been, they set the course for our future. 
We all have the need to express ourselves, to speak, to make communion from our lives. Own your story and you own your life. Your audience is somewhere out there. My message to you is to really be proud of who you are. You have a unique set of skills and talents and there are certain things that you do better than just about anyone. Believe in your greatness and your abilities and the amazing foundation that SOAS has given you. The one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write, build, design, speak, and live a life that only you can. In short, we most regret thinking we didn't reach our full potential. We most regret not becoming the person we feel we could have become if only we had tried. That is one mistake you can never go back to and fix, and that's one mistake you can stop making from today. Congratulations to each and every one of our graduates. You will always be part of SOAS, and SOAS will always be part of you. Thank you.